Hi, and welcome to Northwest Off-Road. I am Dan, and we got the Pathfinder again today. And today, we're gonna be looking at the roof rack. Let's check it out. This is a 2004 Nissan Pathfinder. SD edition, the Sport edition, and it came with the Sport edition roof rack, the ones that say Pathfinder side of them. I actually really liked that rack a lot, um, and I used that for quite some time, but it didn't quite have everything I needed to strap things down like a shovel or recovery boards. Just not have spots for bungees, it was always a pain, right? So I got a rack and put it on top of there, and I had this like stacked rack thing, which worked great for, I don't know, a year and a half, two years, three years, I can't remember. Uh, the problem with that though is that the clamps on there would just eventually get weaker and the metals are bending and it was kind of a little bit shaky and it was double stacked on top. It's like, okay, and there's probably a better solution. So I decided to get rid of the SC rack, the rack that came standard on it, and just uh, take the rack on top and put it down lower and see if I can redo how it uh, actually secured to the top of the roof. And so this is what I have today. Now is it secured differently? It's also <laughs> extended out. So. Let's take a closer look. So taking the standard SC roof rack off kind of left it kind of undone a little bit. It's not as clean as it used to be. Um, I'll get a little closer in view here, but you can see how the edges are exposed a little bit here. There's this piece that kind of floats off on its own. I'll come around to the back here. You can see how this looks. In the back here, you can see it's just kind of, okay, somewhat exposed. The plastic piece you can see actually went all the way around here and really came up nice. So. It's not as nice up top, I would say. I mean, it's kind of a trade-off. I could get some plastic pieces to fill this in, but what is that game, right? Um, you can't reach really the top anyway. The vehicle's so high. There's the other side. And then um, get our casket in front over here. Even kind of looks more exposed. You can see how the pieces don't really line up well in there. How they just kind of sit out there. The rack itself is one of those racks I bought from eBay. The rack is 78 inches long now. It was much shorter when I bought it, about 16 inches shorter because it added 16 inches in length. I really wanted to go from the front as far as I could with the light bar all the way back to the back of the vehicle. So 78 inches from here all the way back. I added 16 inches in there. And um, let's take a look at what that looks like. You can see I just did a really poor welding job, but I was still learning to weld. The metal's pretty thin. Added this tubing that's relatively the same size, but you can tell a difference. I mean, um, it's not perfect. It's kind of rough. And of course, the rungs here is metal, and then I put rebar in here. And you could definitely tell the texture of the rebar. And even in the middle here to kind of support this, I put that in as well. I welded that together. So that gave me the extra length of 78 inches in total. So, um, the big thing though about this is how did I get it to attach to the roof rack? And I think that's a question that mainly a lot of people ask is how did I get it attached to the roof rack? Well, this is how I did it. So I have a metal bar here. It's a flat bar, mild steel. It's one inch by eight inch in thickness by 36 inches long. Obviously I cut it off, not 36 inches long anymore. But this one inch wide eighth inch fits right in that slot. Just right. You can see it's got some wiggle room in there. Perfect. So that's exactly what I did for the bottom piece to, to hold on the bottom side of the rack. If you look at the top side of the rack, you notice it's flat relatively from one to another. So I just use the angle. This is actually just two inch, uh, eighth inch steel angle down and over to kind of fill that in. And that can move around. It doesn't have to be exactly on, but that can move around a little bit to, uh, you know, there's lots of room to move in here. The top piece, you know, can move back and forth or whatever. And that was just kind of perfect to hold it up. Two inches with enough height and enough width. And so anyway, um, to put the bolt through here, I think that's a six millimeter bolt. I actually captured it by welding it. And you can kind of see it down in there on the very edge. I welded those in and then filed them down to make sure they're thin enough to slide through. Obviously, to take off that screw to get it on there or get this in through and then put it back on. But um, so that slides in and then on this was a captured screw going through it, uh, six millimeter screw. And that's what's coming up here and tied down with a washer. And that's a nylock uh, nut front and back. Now, I welded those in. You don't have to weld those in. Um, you could probably use something else to hold them. Or if you put them close enough to the edge, like kind of I did here, 
Yes, you can probably hold the head of the nut as it turns to make it tight. Um, I captured them with the welder. It was just easier for me to do. Uh, you know, a simple welder, a flux core welder, like a 90 hour welder, or sometimes cheaper. I'm going to be able to weld that, no problem, and hold that in place. Um, so that's what I did. I used two just for stability. Uh, I didn't need to use two, but I didn't want these to collide with this if it's just one. So I ended up using two in the bottom and one up top. And I did six of those. So two in the back, as you can see there, there, and then several up front. And then two in the front and two in the sides. So two in the back, two in the front, two in the sides. One thing to note is the height from here to here as it goes back. And you can see it's wider there. And as it comes forward, it comes closer, narrower between the two. And as it comes forward, it goes wider again. And that's because the roof is not exactly level. It actually bends, kind of slopes from top to bottom, bottom to top. So you have to actually kind of give a little bit of space or make your drill holes a little bit bigger so that you can have that adjustment. Kind of get it on there all loose and kind of see how it fits right. Then you can screw it down tight. And again, it's wide, longer, like tar in the back there, kind of right close in the middle, and then a little bit tar up front. Again, same uh, one inch wide plate down below and then a two inch angle up above the bolts. Uh, two coming up like that and then one going over. I did... The angle on the inside it seemed to make sense you could probably put this angle on the outside and then you can see it but i i kind of like the clean look of the of the bar as opposed to having this bracket there so that's why i went on the inside but your choice on that you can go either way for the light bar up front this was pretty easy modification now that the rack was on so well um for the front i just did an angle bar this looks like one inch by eighth inch angle two bolts going through to come forward and i welded a plate on here actually um, it's just a square plate of probably, this looks like an inch and a half type flat bar. This is welded at both sides to give something to mount it on. And I can actually put this another angle on here and come forward to the light. So this worked out pretty well. Um, everything is kind of a funny angle because it's a round light bar. Um, I actually like those because they only connect on two spots, left and right. Notice there's nothing in the middle, which makes it easier to mount. So uh, angle here is another bar I just bend. And then that makes a bracket on here. It's all very, it's all very strong and mounted well to the rack, which is what I wanted. If I had to do another rack, what would I do different, or would I do this again, or what would I change? Well, actually, I liked how it turned out. I like the rough look. Um, I like the rebar in there. I mean, it would be nicer to have it a little bit cleaner, but honestly, no one can tell. Um, even the rebar on there, most people don't even see it. I kind of like it. It's definitely unique and different. Gives a character. Uh, nothing else like it out there, of course. And it just looks like it was intended that way. It's not anything that looks different. Or people say, well, that's strange or weird. It just looks like mm, that's the way it was built intentionally. So uh, that's why I like it. So uh, the mounts for the light work well. Uh, works great. Um, no complaints. I mean, I like, I like everything about the rack. The only thing I don't like is the paint. And I would do that different next time. And I really think preparation was the key here. Uh, there was paint on this rack when it came. It wasn't that good. And then I kind of painted over it, and it's just kind of getting bad. As you can see, some spots where my shovel will touch, it's starting to kind of rust through a little bit. And it's definitely not smooth paint over there. And certainly this angle piece is real bad. Um, obviously, preparation was not done very well there either. So if I had to do it again, I certainly would do a better paint job. Preparation is the key. And at some point, I'll have to pull this off and redo it. No big deal. You know, it's an afternoon or whatever um just to do it right but until then i just keep touching it up making it work and eventually someday i'll redo it again so so that's the roof rack on the r50 this is a custom rack um built certainly put time and energy into it but overall inexpensive comparatively uh, the ones that you buy they're pretty expensive they're definitely worth it uh, but there's a lot of energy and effort gone into those so you get what you pay for but if you're looking for something more custom more different uh something that you want to spend time on this is a good example of that. Um, I do recommend it. And if you can have the time and energy to do it, I recommend uh, doing a better paint job than what I have done. Anyway, that's my roof rack on my R50 Pathfinder. Hope you like it. I really like it. Stay tuned, subscribe, like. More of these uh, videos yet to come. Thanks for watching.